Hello and welcome to Pixelated Realms Gamescast, your guide through the digital landscape, untangling the mysteries of your favorite titles and discussing the latest and greatest in video game fun. I'm your host, Alex Salerno. Alongside me today is my good friend, Dustin. Tyler is out. Dustin, how's it going? Pretty well, pretty well. Just uh, sick as fuck. Like I told <laughs> you before the call, um, when you have a four-year-old who's in preschool, you just perpetually sick it's just all the time so that's just the default don't have kids people don't have kids <laughs> especially yeah. if you don't have a strong immune system yeah well nice you have to get better before gdc though i know i know you're gonna kick me out of the room like no no sleep in your car you're gonna, gonna sleep gonna in the sick. hallway honestly though like i've been seriously thinking about masking up at gdc just to like i don't know like these conferences are just like a fucking cesspool you know and i know like covid w or went around everywhere at dice and i'm like do i want to mask up but then if you and david don't mask up does it really matter if i mask up i didn't you even know? think about that i i might bring one and i think probably wear it sometimes maybe when we're like walking the floor yeah it's hard because the whole point of these conferences is to like network and so, to a certain degree, you want some FaceTime with people, but at yeah, the same time, you don't want to get sick. Yeah, like the only person who has a mask on. And hold on, I'm going to cut off for a second. This is a beeping at me. Yeah. All right, well, that gives me a good opportunity to talk about the fact that next week, so here's our housekeeping. Next week, we're going to GDC. We will be doing an episode still beforehand. Right. So right. in two episodes, we'll probably do a GDC recap. So for anybody interested in that, look forward to our talk on the game developer conference i'm super excited I'm, dustin's super excited we might even take a little bit of video um about that and see where where we get but today is a little bit that this week has been kind of slow on the news cycle for video games so we're going to talk about i think mostly our anticipated games coming up so what what are we looking forward to in this year from this point on um let's jump in and start with the first and I want to bring this up so I don't uh, say this wrong, but we want to say a quick piece about Akira Toriyama. Um, sadly, passed away on March 1st. He was one of the anime manga artists and designers of, you know, one of the greats and um, creator of Dragon Ball Z, famously, and and I think many others. Um, so we just want to take a moment. Also, but uh, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, we wanted to take a moment to to you know say something about him and. It's just that is you know we lost one of the greats and it's uh it's really sad yeah you know like i posted this uh, to brian from game informer he was talking about it on um on twitter and i was like dude like this like you know like, i'm not someone who gets like super mushy when like people die like famous people die especially i don't know them you know but there have definitely been a few in my life where i'm like oh shit because it's just like such a meaningful impact mm -hmm. you know like one of those was robert williams i was really sad when robert williams died um but then for me with with akita dying it was more like uh when satoru wada died back in 2015 like from nintendo like the longtime ceo mm -hmm. and it was like holy shit because it's just i watched dragon ball like my whole childhood you know it's just like and like one of the people who were responsible for like creating those those memories for you pass away it's kind of like a little bit of you dies uh with mm -hmm. it so it's just uh yeah it's super bummer when, when uh, i saw the news the other night yeah i mean i would say he's probably i mean dragon ball z was the gateway drug for a lot of people in anime and i think an entire generation owes him for being interested in it and it's just sad to see him pass it i mean relatively early like you know i don't know exactly what the causes of it were but he was 68 years old um you know i mean not super young but also it seems like it's just sad yeah yeah definitely and um you know yeah the whole dragon ball saga really right uh he was work. uh he was responsible for so yeah um yeah it sucks yeah all right. Well, uh, on to some some happier news. Then let's let's dive into you know what are you what are you currently playing, and and then we'll go into our anticipated games. Why don't we Why don't we stay video games adjacent for a second and and uh, and talk about the Super Mario Brothers movie sequel? 
Oh, yes, yes, yes. It was Mario Day a couple days ago. Good call. I didn't watch yeah. the reveal. Did you see? What was it? I didn't. I saw it. it's coming out in 2026. Uh, I'm pretty excited. Uh, I really enjoyed the first one. It's one of the only movies I've taken Arthur to the theaters to see in person. Arthur's my four-year-old. For people who don't know, um, very difficult to get a four-year-old to sit through a movie, but um, especially at the theaters. So he really did. Uh, so it was tons of fun. You know, it was a super fun movie. Um, you know, I know everybody like has a love-hate relationship with Chris Pratt at this point in his career, <laughs> but um, I thought he killed it as Mario for the most part. So yeah, I'm really excited to see what they bring to the table with the second movie. Yeah, I'm excited too. I I actually liked the movie and I think a lot of people were pleasantly surprised. You know, when Chris Pratt was announced to be Mario, there was a lot of hesitation. And we were like, hmm, I don't know how that'll be. But, you know, the movie was good. It was fun. Um, and so I am excited to see a second one. And I think Naomi will be old enough to probably sit in the theater and watch it too, at least, you know, during the matinee. So yeah, yeah two, um, two years, right? So she'll be about three and a half ish. Yeah. Almost four, depending on so, when it comes out in 2026. Yeah. So maybe that'll be one of her first, if not the first theater movie she sees. Yeah. So. Very cool. cool. All right. Now, um, what was the question? What am I playing? Yeah. What are you playing? Anything different? Still the same? Uh, oh, man. Pretty much the same, honestly. Uh, I didn't get the game that much this week, as much as I would have wanted to. I was still setting on two hours into the trial on, on Skull and Bones. Uh, I am going to try to play the full eight. Um, I saw that, you know, Elden Ring has some content coming out later this year. And so I really feel like I should finally pick that game up. I've had it. It's just like such a daunting experience, you know, like, like you just know you're like walking into like fucking 80 plus hours. Yeah. You know, and I'm like, ain't nobody got time for that shit. Like, that's how I know? feel about Persona 5 is like. I refuse, like, I don't want to start it because I heard it's so long. But Elden Rings is, I would say it's like my top three favorite games of all time. So, I mean, you got to give it a chance. It's so good. Yeah. Plus, if I do, then I can finally tell my buddy who gave me the code that I played it because he was like, are you going to play this game? And I was like, I'm going to play it. Trust me. Are you sure? I'm like, yes. And then I haven't played it. So he's like, I'm never giving you codes again. <laughs> he totally stiffed me on Hogwarts Legacy. You got to buy it. So, yeah, well, maybe when the DLC comes yeah. out, you have to at least play enough of Elden Ring that we can do an episode about it as well, the kind of resident non-Souls player. Yeah, well, what's funny is like, he was actually talking to me about it. He's like, yeah, you know, like, I got really good at the game when it came out, and now it's been so long that, like, you almost, like, forgotten everything. Mm -hmm. And so I ended up picking it up two years later and, like, jump into this DLC and, like, relearn all these techniques that you had like, you know, down to a T um, before. So yeah, you know, uh, two years later, that is a quite a gap between content, but uh, I don't know if anything's come out in between. I don't think so. Uh, some minor updates. There were some like PVP updates and some things, but um, nothing major. I don't think there was any like new weapons or anything or yeah. content really. Yeah. So, you know, but uh, I am gonna. I, I have Cyberpunk and Hogwarts Legacy sitting down on my PlayStation Five. That I need to pick up. Um, but uh, yeah, it's just been it's been a crazy week. It's just been sick, and again, like even when I'm not sick, two kids and a wife who's not a gamer makes it difficult to sit down and play. Plus, she stiffed me a couple times when we were supposed to get get online and a game. Like I'm busy. <laughs> yeah, well, I also have a family, so it's not as easy to schedule time as it was before. You only before. have one now, only one kid, so you don't get as much of a break. <laughs> yeah, okay, you're going to hold that over me. Yeah, <laughs> one one is more than enough to keep you completely busy. So Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, I finally beat Spider-Man. Oh, nice. Spider-Man 2, I was like, I got to finish this, and I was so close before, so I chipped away at it. That game is so good. I love that I... I was pleasantly surprised by the ending of the game and how, um, well, I, I guess I should say, like, spoiler warning. Um, I'm not going to... Uh, if you haven't played it right now, you don't get spoilers. Yeah, it's like over a year. So yeah. Spider-Man 2, if you haven't played Spider-Man 2, uh, maybe skip a few minutes uh, on this one. But um, I, you know, I, I was, when I jumped back in, I was just before the part where the 
the true bad guy reveals himself. So it goes from, you know, Craven to Venom. And um, I thought that transition was really well done. And, you know, a lot of games you can kind of tell uh, that you're like, oh, this bad guy isn't the real bad guy. There's like, a, you know, it's really this other thing. And I did know in this one, but I didn't know as to like what scale they were going to take it to. I thought maybe it was like, oh, okay, we were going to go through Craven, And then after Craven, maybe there'd be like a small segment. No, like a whole third of the game and this like massive part of it is is Venom. And I was like, and oh, I this is awesome. That. Yeah, I didn't know that, and I, I thought back afterwards, I was like, oh, the fucking special edition has, like, a Venom statue. So when, like, Venom made an appearance in the game, I, I had just, like, completely deleted that from my mind. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, shit, Venom's in this, that's dope. And then, yeah, like, you get to the point where, like, you're gonna like, encounter Craven at the end, and you're already at the end of that arc, I guess, and you're like, oh, man, I'm, like, about to wrap up the game. And then you're like, no, yeah, like, you're, like, probably 60%. Yeah. Maybe a little over, maybe like, yeah, maybe like a third. It's not like a third of the game left. And they're like, holy shit, there's like a lot more content. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And then uh, I will say, I, I wasn't a big fan of the last suit you get for Miles. Because yeah, I, I agree. just like, isn't that like too? Like, you're going to be able to figure out who he is with that, you know? Yeah. Like, because he has like his hair showing and like some stuff. Yeah. It's. Yeah, I mean, a lot of Miles suits are way better than Peter's suits, mm. but that particular suit, and they force change it, so you have to wear that one in like certain scenes. Yeah. So I was like, oh, this suit's not even like half as cool as his other suits, but yeah. Did you, you collect know. all of the spider bots? Yeah, I ended up platinuming it. So okay, cool. Um, yeah. I just finished it up. Yeah, you do all the spider bots, and then you get that cool scene uh, with uh, about the Sony movie. Um, yeah. Which was I thought cool. that was a nice little nod to it. So, like, not a huge spoiler, but yeah. So, if you do all, all of this one side mission and you go, you end up, it ends up taking you to this like alleyway. And, um, you know, if you've ever seen Into the Spider Verse, so they travel or across the Spider Verse, they travel through dimensions with these like hexagonal portals. Well, one of those portals opens up and you kind of see into another dimension, into another character, and they do a little scene and then it closes the portal. And so, and they even mentioned Miguel um, a little bit. So they, they yeah. basically are acknowledging that this video game is part of that Spider-Man Sony universe, which is very cool. Which, I mean, yeah. obviously makes sense. Sony owns the IP and everything, so. Yeah, I mean, it, it's the perfect gateway to be like, okay, Quinn. Like, Quinn has to be in Spider-Man 3. Mm -hmm. uh, whether they bring her from another dimension or if it's Quinn from the one they're in. I imagine they'll probably bring her from another dimension. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, no. Spider Man's fantastic. Um, what was I going to say? Um, oh, there's. Remember, we had a whole conversation a couple months ago about plotting versus like completing a game 100%. Mm -hmm. and I don't actually think I can plot Spider Man because Which... there's a there is a quest or a, an accomplishment you have to do, and it's like to like walk across like a tightrope and like stealth kill like 30 guys or something like that. Oh. And um, there's no more missions. And I've tried to do it by like finding like uh, bad guy encounters in the mm -hmm. city, and I like go up in the sky and like put one across the buildings and like try to do it, and um, it just doesn't give me credit for them. So I'm just like, mm. shit, I might actually not be able to do it unless I start another campaign, which I'm not going to do. So well, they just <laughs> dropped New Game Plus, like. Literally, like, a couple days ago. So, actually, that might be a good opportunity for you to do that. So, you just do a new game. Plus, everything carries over. Um, and they they have new suits. So, if you are in new game plus, you, like, unlock new stuff. So, I was huh. thinking of doing it. And there's new achievements, actually, for new game plus. But it counts as, like, a separate kind of game. Um, so, I was thinking, I was like, oh, man, I literally just beat it. And they dropped it. So, I was like, maybe I'll hop in and do the new game plus stuff. But th I think that would probably be an easy way for you to get that one is that the last one you have uh, i think i have like four different ones but that was the one i was trying to complete and then i was like well i can't do it the one i i did recently though i i uh flew across the whole mm -hmm. map you know um without touching the ground so that was a yeah. kind of a cool one to figure out the path that i could take to get mm -hmm. that done uh, i, I like ended up one. flying across from financial district and flying across to yeah. uh, Brooklyn. 
and then like going down that was like mm -hmm. much easier the first time i was trying to go through manhattan and i uh, with the skyscrapers and everything i got really fucking close really close like to finding a path that worked but i would just like kept coming up like 10 feet short from hitting the the roof fan and uh so i was like fuck dude i'm gonna just try to find a different way yeah i did the same thing i like that one a lot actually it's like and i made the mistake of i read it and then didn't double check it when I went to do it. So I did it in reverse. So I did it from the Brooklyn side to the financial district. And I was like, why didn't the trophy pop? And I'm looking and I'm like, it's like financial district to Astoria. And I'm like, ah, dang it. Yeah, I did see, it backwards. I, I did the same thing. But well, kind of. <laughs> I didn't realize I had to go to Astoria. I just thought I was flying across Manhattan. So I went from financial district to Harlem mm. all the way to the end, like where the where May's graveyard is. and um. And I was like, what the fuck? I just flew across the whole thing. <laughs> and I looked at it, I was like, ah, shit. I gotta go to the story of fuck. But um, yeah, and that was, a, that was a, a fun mission to kind of like figure out. Yeah, it's something that I don't think you'd ever accomplish unless you were purposely like trying to do the trophies. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, that's cool. Yeah. And like, I know we kind of talked about that a little bit, but that's kind of one of the fun things about trophies is that like with the exception of ones that are just obnoxiously difficult but like one things like that that are just kind of like these like challenge like mini challenges that are difficult but not like impo like not impossible just something you wouldn't normally do uh kind of adds another layer of fun it's kind of like if you ever read the where's waldo books and in the back there's like the secret items that you can go and find you know you're like yeah that is that's kind of what i feel like but such a fun game, and if you know anybody out there has a PlayStation hasn't played it, I highly recommend it. Yeah. Um, you know what else I was playing? As I picked up, so after I beat Spider Man, I picked up Hellblade: Senua's Saga, and because uh, on a recommendation from somebody, and you know, one, it's a Viking game, and um, I'm a huge Viking person. Like I love that culture, like any Scandinavian Norse culture, and I love it. And so I was like, okay, like I'm in. Um, I didn't realize that it's like a really short experience. It was probably like an eight hour game and I platinum the whole thing. Like the, the achievements, um, are really easy. Like, it's just like play through the game basically. And so I was like, oh, cool. So I, I was able to like knock the platinum out, but the game is so cool and unique. And the, the second game is coming out. So that's another reason why I was like, oh, I want to, I want to play this because, um, We'll talk about anticipated games, but I was like waiting for that one to come out. But what I didn't know is that the game is like this like psychological thriller game. And I don't know if you've played this one or even seen it, but like, um, so I have the um, spatial, like PlayStation spatial headset, not the new one that came out, but like the original one. And so it has 3D audio. And in the game, you play as Senua, who's this like um, picked warrior, which is like the southern part of Scandinavia. And uh she is trying so spoilers but the game is like years old um so she's play she's she her like lover died and she's trying to go into hell to revive him but she has like schizophrenia or something or like some kind of psychosis she has like some mental disorder and so while you're playing the game she has these like voices that like <laughs> talk to you the whole time and are like casting doubts on you the whole time so there's you're like walking and they're like they're like why is she going that way she's going the wrong way what's going on oh, she shouldn't go that way oh my god i can't believe she just did that and it's really interesting to play the game because you're like whoa like i'm getting like i'm kind of nervous uh were you going the wrong way or is no. it giving you real hints so it's just like fucking with you no it's fucking with you like the whole time um and you know the whole game is actually about like essentially mental health uh sort of i mean not in like a preachy way but like you know like she's great kind of crazy and it's about her coming to terms with that and realizing that like because she has been considered cursed like her whole life and people have tried to avoid her and like her village blames her for all these things and she kind of has to come to terms with the fact that no she's not cursed she just has like an issue that she needs to work through and it's really, really cool, interesting game. And the art style is absolutely gorgeous. And there's a little bit of combat. And so it's kind of like one of those games where it's like a puzzle kind of game, but it's also some a little bit of combat. Yeah. Um, but very short experience, very cool, very intense. It's like one of those like very dense games. Like it's very, it's like eight hours. So not like too short, but 
you know, like compact, uh, very intense game, like very emotionally intense. The cutscenes are very intense. I mean, I don't want to spoil too much, but like, it's just like, you're just like, you come out of it and you're just like, whoa, like <laughs> emotionally exhausted. Uh, which I was not expecting. All Saturday, just like wake up in a good mood, go to sleep in like a weird mood. Yeah, totally. <laughs> um, so uh, I'm excited about the second one. Yeah, but that's funny. You made me think of Vikings because you're like, oh, this Viking game. I, I recently saw Shane Gillis' stand up on Netflix. Uh, mm-hmm. You know Shane Gillis is? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's the Down Syndrome one. Yeah, and he's just talking about he's like how. Any like historical army in history, history if you man. make them uh, gay, that they're way worse. <laughs> yeah, he's like, he's, like, he's like, you can imagine like gay Vikings, you know, like you're on the island and like, oh man, the Vikings are coming, and then uh, you're like, they're gonna rape the women and children. This is terrible. And then they pull up their little pride flag and like, oh no, that's way worse. <laughs> oh. uh, I had me crack it up. It was really funny. <laughs> yeah, I think his stuff is pretty funny. Uh, yeah, his, his skits, his uh, his like little skits are really funny. The one on the plane, where he, they think it's gonna crash, and it's like everyone's calling their loved ones, and he calls somebody he hates, and he's like calls like a like a <laughs> auto part spice. He's like, yeah, man, fuck you guys. Meet me in the parking lot ten minutes, and we'll fuck you up. <laughs> it's uh, pretty funny. Yeah, I I like some of his stuff. Um, got anything else? Any other <laughs> any other big plays? No, Otherwise we'll no. move on. Nothing that I'm playing, man. I'm boring. It's just the same shit. Whatever I'm playing with you is basically what I'm playing these uh, days. Oh, yeah. Skull and Bones, which we're probably going to give up on soon. Yeah. Yeah, yeah just we like do. Power World is just dead. Dead in the group. Yeah, well, Power World... Yeah, well, I'm not going to I'm not gonna go on that tangent. But um, let me... Before we dive in, though, you know, I, we just want to say that we really appreciate everyone who follows and subscribes to us. You know, we post new episodes every Tuesday. <laughs> Um, at 8 a.m. Uh, Eastern Standard Time on podcast services and YouTube. You can also find us on Instagram threads and YouTube at Pixelated Realms Podcast. Uh, it's the best way to support us. You know, we're a small, tiny, little indie podcast. We, we work really hard to try and create an episode every week. So we really appreciate, um, you know, everyone that listens to us. So thank you very much. Um, also, if you want to ask us a question, leave a comment, be part of the show, you can now go to pixelatedrealms.org slash ask, that's A-S-K, you can leave us a comment, <coughs> excuse me, a comment, and we'll talk about it at the end of the show. So let's, let's actually bring that up. But what, so this, this year has been kind of a, a catch up on your backlog year, which honestly, I appreciate. And I've been using it, like I said, to, to kind of catch up. Um, I just jumped back into Horizon Forbidden West because I only got about halfway through that game and I ended up getting distracted by something else. And then I also have the Harry Potter Hogwarts Legacy, which I also have to catch up on. So I was like, okay, at least I'm going to take this time. But then Helldivers came in and has been stealing all my time because Helldivers is just fucking greatest game ever. I you still play You buy the shirt? No. Oh, the one you sent me? No, but yeah. maybe I should. We can match. You get a shirt, actually. I'll wear it to GDC. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, and then two years when it shows up. Yeah. GDC 2026. Yeah, exactly. When Naomi's with me. Um, yeah. yeah. So so what what upcoming games are you looking forward to? There, there are a few, right? There's not... A lot of them are actually unannounced, but the ones that are announced, like, what, what yeah. are you feeling? Well, I mean, like, from the stuff that's announced with dates, honestly, like, there's not really anything that I'm just like clamoring to play, mm-hmm. you know. Like I know Ghost of Tsushima director's cut is coming out, and I love the first one. It's like one of my favorite games of all time. But um, unless there's new content, I'm not gonna pick it up just to. I'm not gonna pay the money just to get like some new armor and stuff like that. Um, yeah, it's funny because you mentioned Horizon, and I think Ghost actually killed Horizon for me because mm. Ghost combat is so calculated and um it's like a little bit like a slightly slower pace to, to um to the movement and everything or i played that and then i tried to go straight into horizon and i just couldn't play horizon for like 30 mm-hmm. minutes just fucking hated the the way the character mode it's just like really fast and like like twitchy kind of and i was like i don't like how this plays so 
I just gave up on after 30 minutes because, again, I was coming right out of the other one. Mm-hmm. And I loved it so much. I was just like, I'm not going to. Yeah, that's a hard transition. But um, I'd say from games that do are announced but don't have release dates, probably Star Wars Outlaws is the thing that I'm looking forward to the most. Um, a little worried, you know, like I worked on Star Wars Battlefront and Star Wars Battlefront 2. Jedi Fallen Order when I was doing PR for EA. And I know EA gets a ton of shit, but, you know, the battle Battlefront 2 had a horrible launch, but the game, by the time they stopped putting new content in the game, it was just thriving. I mean, absolutely mm-hmm. thriving. Like, I mean, one of the greatest comeback stories really never told in video <laughs> games. Um, it's the, I'm sure the game still has a huge player base. Uh, and then Fallen Order, obviously, was, like, really well-received. Um, but I kind of like the play style better, where Ubisoft games, I don't... Like, I'm not an Assassin's Creed guy, mm-hmm. you know, as you guys know. Um, I played Division, I played Rainbow Six Siege, I like those games. But, um, I don't know. We'll see. You know, yeah. I'm not like a huge fan of like the Ubisoft uh, design aesthetic. Yeah, I I actually so, well, yeah, Ubisoft definitely has like a style now, right? They they're like doubling down on their open world, tower unlocking sections, side quests everywhere kind of style, and I fully expect Outlaws to follow that pattern, and I think there's a place for that style. It's very casual, in my opinion, where it's kind of like checking tasks off a list. Not that all, you know, all games to a certain degree have that, but more so in this where it's like, okay, I can see the entire map, you know, kind of like Horizon and uh, less heavy on narrative and more on, you know, go unlock this area. Okay, go unlock that area. Do this side quest, do this side quest, da, 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 and kind of, you know very you know in a casual way and by casual i mean like nothing's particularly hard um the story is usually there but it's usually kind of secondary to to like exploring the map and we'll see sometimes it hits and sometimes it doesn't so like i really love valhalla assassin's creed valhalla even though it's not an assassin's creed game which is funny it's like my favorite of the assassin's creed game but it's the one that is least like assassin's creed Um, but I really liked that game and I felt like the story was really good and I felt like exploring the map was very, uh, uh, satisfying for me because it like felt like you, you have like a battle map and you're like pushing, like you're, you're everything, exploring the map actually had a reason for it in that. But then, um, I played like Ghost Recon and I actually like the Ghost Recon games, but I like them because it's something I can do when I want to be kind of mindless and just chip away at something. It, I don't play that game because I like enjoy the story, like the story is shit. But, uh, you know, it's like, okay, I just want to do, I just want to be kind of like some soldier and go and, you know, clear a fort and do some shit. Like it's, it's just some kind of nonchalant game. So I feel like there is a place for those kind of games where it's like, I need something that uh, isn't too intense is just kind of like a video game, right? Like a classic video game experience. But is that going to translate to a Star Wars game where Star Wars is traditionally very story-driven, very environment-driven, right? The the unique universe and everything like that. So I'm hoping, of course we all are, that they are able to take that and make it something really rich. But that's not something Ubisoft has traditionally been known for. You know, they're known for making kind of like very large games that are like, I wouldn't even, I wouldn't say like super shallow, but, you know, medium, medium depth. Can't hear you. Did you um, mute yourself? Like, yeah, yeah. I was like, can we like a Naughty Dog Star Wars game? Like, <laughs> That would be great. I think, you know? didn't, um, I think Respawn just had their, their game canceled and they had a Star Wars game that was canceled because of like layoffs and stuff like that. And I'm really disappointed in that because that I was looking forward to. I'll have to look it up, but I don't think I it was what the name of it was. Um, There's a lot of star Wars projects that I felt like kind of got shelved. Like uh, the Knights of the old Republic remake is still in limbo right now. 
respawns got canceled. Outlaws is still going strong, so hopefully that one doesn't. Well, I mean, I think that one's too far along. I don't think that one's gonna get canceled at this point. Yeah, but you never they, know. They canceled that Mandalorian game. Uh, yeah. So. Which honestly, like, I don't really mind. Like, I like the Mandalorian TV show. I know you definitely did. I mean, it's a whole like, uh, you know, you got your tattoo. Um, but uh, can't, can't. but yeah, uh, but I got I that know. long before the show. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, so like, I don't know. I feel like it's just not needed. Yeah, that I, much. I was telling um my brother this the other day. Like, I think we need more unique <laughs> Star Wars stories. So, you know, part of the beauty of Star Wars is the the cast of characters and the unique universe that's been created. But the underdog story is the best story. And you can't have an underdog story of the characters that have their arc completed already every time. Like you can't like every, you can't continuously be the underdog. So it's like we need we need new characters. That's why, like, I think Fallen Order did such a good job because that's a new character. Yeah, you know, I think that, that on the flip side of the argument, right? People are like, right. Cal Kestis, like, we have so much information about the Star Wars universe. Like, where did, where was this guy the whole time? How come he's not in the movies? How come he's not in the shows? Like, if he's like this Jedi that exists, how is he flown under the radar from Order sixty six? And you know, uh, I there were opportunities to bring him into the Mandalorian and that because the timelines line up. But um, I don't know if they did that on purpose. Well, obviously there had to be some purpose behind it. Um, I think sure they Cameron will. Monaghan would have loved to, you know, reprise that role in live action. But yeah, maybe that's because of that exact thing, right? Where it's like, oh well, he has his own thing going on like, the games and kind of keeping them separate. But yeah, he doesn't have to be like a main character. I mean, even just like a, I think people will lose their shit just from like a cameo. Yeah. Well, he actually did an interview. Uh, and he said he would he would reprise the role for a live action, but only if he has a complete story arc, meaning like you know he can't just be a side character. Oh, really? I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. so, so he wants I, like a Cal Custis show, basically a show, or just being a major character in mm -hmm. a show. I think I think it's only a matter of time before they bring him into something. I think they're just probably waiting to figure out where he fits in. Hopefully, he'll be in the Mandalorian movie. That, right? I That's would happening. be surprised if he wasn't. Well, I I would wouldn't be surprised either way. I think, but that would be good. Yeah, but uh, but yeah, Star Wars. We'll see. You know, um, I'm sure there's a lot of fears that it's just going to be. Well, I'd say fears, but some people might really love it. It's just like an Assassin's Creed reskin, uh, in like yeah. the Star Wars land, you know. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, you know, Assassin's Creed is massively popular, well-selling game. So there's obviously a huge audience for that. Um, so we'll see, but yeah, um, if it's good, I'll definitely pick it up. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm probably going to, you know, pick it up either way. Hopefully it, it's good and not a waste of money unless it's like comes out and it, people are like, it's awful, but unplayable. It's unplayable. unplayable state. Yeah. We'll see. Um, you, do you have any interest in dragon's dogma? That's what no. I'm looking forward to coming out. Dragon's Dogma comes out in a few months. I don't know if you've seen all the stuff online of like they released the for pre-orders the character creator, and it's apparently like very com uh, detailed. And people are just making like these ugly characters. People are making like Shrek and um, like Leon from Resident Evil and you know Kratos from God of War and stuff like that. So there, people are making like all these crazy characters. I'm but, looking it up right now because I'm not actually familiar with the game, but it looks like, yeah, like a it's medieval like, kind of setting. It's it's a game, so it's a fantasy action adventure game, kind of akin to uh, like a I want to say a little bit like Dark Souls, but not fully that. Um, because in diff it's a difficult game, but it's also like a party based RPG kind of a thing. Yeah. Um, but it's known for have, but it's more story based, and it's very it's known for being uh having like a really good intense story, and. So I never played the first one, but I'm semi familiar with it, and I'm I'm excited to see what happens with this one. So it comes out in like a week and a half or something like that. So um, I'm looking forward to that. I haven't 
I haven't really looked too hard into the trailers or anything. I kind of want to be surprised. I'm hoping I would be surprised if this doesn't come out with like a 80 plus Metacritic score. Just yeah. given like the, the the scale of it. Yeah. What about uh well not Dragon Age Dreadwolf? It's supposed to get a release date this summer. Well, like we'll find out likely what mm-hmm. the release date is. They said summer EA typically like will do it in May or June. So yeah. EA is would... EA isn't the one to like reveal a game in depth and then like have it sit for like two years. Usually like if they reveal a game, like yeah, they'll reveal it in May and will come out in like October or November. So I expect Dragon Age to come out this fall. Um, you think this fall? Yeah. I mean, from working up there, like very few games. Like Dragon Age got teased like God, like 2019, the first teaser. The only game I can really think of that EA announced really far in advance, like started showing gameplay and everything, was Anthem. They did an Anthem like mm. thing at E3, and then or EA Play. And then I think it was the next EA Play that they did like a huge deep dive. And then it came out the following February. So that was like the longest campaign I can remember. Most EA games, except like that, they will do a reveal in May or June, usually May. Um, so they'll do like reveal in May, and then they'll do like gameplay for the first time at Summer Games Fest or E3 or EA Play whatever uh, it is now or used to be. And then um, they'll have a campaign that will run through, like, usually October, November. So okay. yeah, if, they, if they announce it in May or June, I'll be really surprised if it doesn't come out this, this year. Yeah, they're, they're probably hoping for, like, a like a kind of... Because that's, like, the, the big AAA games come out in fall, like the kind of Game of the Year contenders. I'd yeah, be interested that's to the see. Thing too. They'll, they'll make sure it comes out early enough, ideally, as long as there's no delays that it can be included in the judging for the game awards. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, I know there was some um, turmoil, I guess, in the development stage of this game because there was, like, some layoffs. There was some, like, it changed hands a few times. So, I mean, this game's been in development for, like, I don't know, like, 10 years or something. So I'd be very interested to hopefully, hopefully it gets the love that it, you know, deserves because, you know, Dragon Age is, been a really strong um franchise so you know bioware of course great company doesn't release anything unless they think it's great with a few exceptions <laughs> yeah, i was gonna but, say careful yeah. careful yeah <laughs> but uh you know lately they've been having a little bit of trouble so this could be the one that kind of brings them out of that or yeah. stick them further in so yeah, I mean, I gotta imagine if Dragon Age came out and bombed, that, uh, I mean, Bioware would be in a pretty tough spot, I have to imagine, because Anthem did terribly, obviously, everyone knows that. Um, I don't think they've even come out with anything since Anthem, have they? Um, Anthem came out in 20, I guess it came out of Mass Effect Legendary Edition 2021. Yeah, but. Which isn't really, like, a new game, right? Uh yeah. I, I, so yeah, they haven't really come out with anything since Anthem, like new game. Yeah, that was uh, twenty nineteen, that was five years ago. Yeah. So I'm sure that yeah, they're obviously working on this Dragon Age game. I imagine they might be working on some kind of Mass Effect game also behind the scenes that hasn't been announced yet. Well they did they did announce they're working on uh they did like a teaser trailer for Mass Effect. Okay. So you know. Stick to what they're good at, you know. Mm-hmm. Go back to yeah. Dragon Age and uh, Mass Effect. Even though, like, I don't think Andro Andromeda was super well received, right? Mass Effect. It had a lot of like bugs, if I remember. I never played it, but it was like the one where like the character animation, like the eyes were popping out of their head while they were talking and <laughs> stuff like that. Yeah. Now there's this. I mean, there's a really lot of a ton of people at Bioware. I mean, it's just across the games industry, you know, there's no studio out there that just has, like, people who are shit at their job, for the most yeah. part. I mean, um, so, yeah, you know, fingers crossed that uh, they crush her with uh, the new Dragon Age. Yeah, yeah, I'm I'm looking forward to that one, and hopefully it's it's not a flop. <laughs> yeah, but nobody kind of ever is rooting for a game to fail, right? Where, like, 
as people who are in the industry, like we always want to see games come out and do well and succeed. So, um, yeah, hopefully we will. Yep. Um, let's see. Uh, Hellblade 2 is coming out. I did kind of talk about that. I am looking forward to that one. Uh, Destiny 2, The Final Shape. So, like, you know, I'm a huge Destiny 2 fan. I have probably 1,500 hours or more in that game. Played all of the expansions, done all of the raids. Um, you know, one of the, like, you know, higher-end players. I'm not looking forward to this expansion. I actually have stopped playing the game this year, and I'm going to play The Final Shape, which is the next one. Uh, it comes out in June, I think, if as long as it doesn't get pushed back. But, like, I'm going to play the bare minimum amount to get the story and then be done with it. Like, Destiny 2 is just... I mean, it's always been on shaky ground, but the ground is, like, finally giving in. And, I like, they just... Knows that also. I mean... Yeah, I, I think that I think they do. Like, they um, just released an update that added, like, gr- these, like, hoverboards that you can, like, grind on rails and shit. And everyone is, like you this is what you're fucking working on like we want like legit content and you give us some fucking skateboard like what like, the guys, fuck are you guys doing what we want. this is not the stuff we're asking for no um, like, is this a final expansion in the light and dark saga it's the final expansion so they haven't re- announced any future expansions beyond this this is supposed to conclude the arc of the the, the witness which is like the main bad guy right now um, whether or not it's the final Destiny 2 expansion, like, ever, who knows? I don't know if they will pivot to a Destiny 3, though they've famously been kind of against doing that. They're like, what? what's different? They kind of think, like, what would be different between 2 and 3 that would make you want a 3, right? Which, uh, you know, is, is well, makes sense. Well, I Overwatch 2, so, you know. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Like, if it's just going to be a reskin, why bother? But, um, so I I would be surprised if this is the final... I mean, it's called the final shape, but if this is the final Destiny 2 expansion, but I think they're struggling. I mean, I haven't looked at the numbers, but as far as, like, interest is concerned, I think it's been declining. I think this is it, honestly. Uh, And I'd say that because just a couple different moves they've made, right? Like, obviously, Marathon is in development. Mm -hmm. We don't know how far that it's out. or that's I I think that's a code name after this, really. Um... You know, so Marathon is being developed. So that's one. You know, they're still technically independent, even if they're like a massive studio. Um, so I don't know how much they're able to split their resources over multiple AAA quality games. Uh, actually, they got bought, though, right? They got bought by Microsoft. Yeah. Oh, it's so, Sony. Sony. They were so. originally, so I mean, they were independent. Then they got bought by Microsoft. Then they went independent again, and now yeah. Sony bought them. Yeah, yeah. Um, but still, you know, like the other reason I think that they could be this could be it for Destiny is because they got rid of the community team for the most part, right? Like all these people who built up these lasting relationships with the community that people could turn to. If you're still planning years of support for Destiny, why would you make that move? Mm-hmm. You know, so. If but if this is it, and after this expansion, they're no longer supporting the title with new content, well, they'll probably do what Blizzard did and just keep pushing out like cosmetics, but like no like new story driven content, then um, you don't really need that as much. You know? mm-hmm. so, I don't know with Marathon coming, them like making moves to like kind of axe a lot of the public facing people in the company in the Destiny 2 community. I wouldn't be surprised if this is it. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm going to be very interested to see what happens with Marathon, because that's another game that, like, nobody asked for. Um, it's one of their older IPs. I mean, not nobody, but, you know, not a lot of people. Um, it's it's an older IP of theirs. One of their, I think it was their first game they ever made as Bungie. And, but, you know, back during the Halo d- days. And so they're like, oh, we're going to bring it back. But I don't, I don't see a lot of buzz about it. You know, nobody's like, oh, my God, they're bringing back Marathon. So and, and they haven't released anything about it yet. So unless that game comes out and really surprises everybody, I'm I'm kind of curious to like what their strategies are going to be going on in the future. Like, what's the future of Bungie? Like, is it still Destiny? Is Marathon going to completely wipe that out? 
is is there some other unknown thing we don't, we're not like seeing in their in their strategy like what's going to go how much on? do you think that's like an internal conversation where people are like hey we love destiny guys but like we're kind of tired of making destiny you know and like i wonder mm-hmm. if that's any internally driven where like talent starts to leave because they're like I'm kind of tired of working on the same ip for years and years so like, if you guys oh, are yeah. doing something new then like we're gonna go work on something new you know yeah definitely i mean i i i certainly see that and i think like a bunch of lead people in bungie had left like over the last couple of years probably because something like similar to that right like they're just kind of like all right like Destiny hasn't been well received in a long time. I mean, it's still popular, no doubt, but it hasn't been the talk of the town in a long time, in like years. And, you know, people are probably like, I'm a really good, you know, creative and I can do other things. And so they're moving on. I mean, it's hard to say from the outside, but yeah, I mean, that's exactly the problem is nobody kind of knows, you know, can nobody can peek in there. Yeah, exactly. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. Obviously, like we'll know pretty soon. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Well, let's move on real quick. Uh, I want to talk about Elden Ring. You know, we did talk about that a little bit, I think. But uh, you know, they having uh, they're releasing Shadow of the Earth Tree, which is a forty dollar DLC. So it's like a significant chunk of content. Uh, and like I was saying earlier, like it's top three favorite games of all time. So I'm super excited about that. And it's going to be hard to jump in, but. I, you know, I'm excited. I mean, my character was so, I beat the game like a bunch of times. So I was on like New Game Plus like five. So I wonder if I jump in, like, is this, am I going to be too overpowered or is it going to be so hard because they're traditionally their DLC is like way harder than the base game? <laughs> am I just going to get absolutely crushed? <laughs> yeah, I think I did the Souls 3 DLC. I downloaded that and I played some and I was like, so we'll see. Like we were talking about earlier, I still need to play Elden Ring. Um, yeah. It's a good now time now to jump in. Yeah, now it's probably, but it's like eighty hours or more, right? So it's like, oh god. I mean, I you could if you beeline the story. I beat it with all my like top tier gear. I beat it in like four or five hours. So let's say you could probably, if you beeline the story without all that shit, you could probably do it in like ten, hmm. ten to twelve. Um, if you don't do any of the side stuff, but. I, I put like a hundred hours in Dark Souls three, so that's why I, I'm like using it as like my gauge, you know. Yeah, it can't be much shorter. <laughs> so yeah, uh, I'll you know I'll probably install it and start it up soon. Yeah, let's see. I mean, and that as far as like announced games, that's like it. Um, there's not like a ton going on. Which is normal. Most of the big games, again, like most, a, a lot of companies will announce their big triple A's in May, and they'll come out in the fall. So it's not shocking that we don't know much about what's happening this at the end of this year. Yet, yeah, but um, you know, May and June will get a huge download of what's to come, and uh, hopefully, there's a lot of excitement. Yeah, we'll, true. We'll be excited with uh, the stuff that's coming. Yeah. I know I'm waiting for like a Hades 2 release date and the Dune Awakening. I'm waiting for that. That'll probably be a fall. Both of those will probably be fall. Did you so, see that thing, Neil deGrasse Tyson, like shit uh, on the way the worms move and uh, in Dune yeah. and people are giving him crap? I guess this is like a normal thing for him to like talk about the physics in, in movies. Mm-hmm. I mean, I kind of agree with like uh, Brian from Game Informer I was like, you know, like if someone calls out that inaccuracy he's like it's inaccurate like you know like what's wrong with that you know like i, I don't think there's anything wrong and i you know he does it for fun like I, this is probably fun for him you know he's it's a movie he doesn't actually give a shit he's just like hey like let's talk science and movies yeah. i don't know enough about the guy but like for someone whatever reason like he seems to be really well like very, very unliked within like the world of twitter sphere so i don't know why i don't know like, if he's like uh, a piece of shit or what not but Whatever reason, people do not like Neil deGrasse Tyson. That's funny because in all the circles I'm in, people love him. So it's really just—I think it's just where you're like looking. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't know. And I, I, I've seen videos of him like where, and I'm like, oh, that's really interesting. So I, I have no beef with the guy. Like he's smart as shit. 
So I think like, you know, when you have someone talking about like science, like that's really interesting. Yeah. So, I, um, I don't know why anyone would, would have a problem with that. I saw another video later of like, okay, how would the worm, how would the worm actually propel itself like that? And the, the person that ended up coming up with like something they were like, okay, so he ingests all the sand and then he has to like excrete it out his backside with like a jet engine. So he's like, he's this giant sand shitting worm that shit's so hard it propels him at like a hundred miles an hour. That's funny. <laughs> yeah. I guess he did a video like this on tremors. I, I imagine so. Probably that's why tremors. Yeah, probably physics terrible, terrible. But I don't think Dune is going for accuracy of science. You know, you they're know going what, for though? science fiction. Honestly, why wouldn't she like consult a physics physicist though, like on something like that? You know, like. Maybe they did. Yeah, maybe, maybe they didn't care. Maybe they're just like, this guy seems to know his shit. And then the, the other guy's Tyson's just like, that guy's a dumbass. He doesn't know what the fuck he's talking about. Should have called me. So maybe that's the whole point <laughs> of this video is just like, call me, guys. I'll help you. Make sure it's accurate. Yeah. Sometimes they do. I forgot what movie it is. I think it was like Interstellar or something. But like, I think they called him and they're like, hey, I need the star maps that will make this accurate. And then they did an accurate star representation of space during that time frame. Oh, that's dope. Yeah. So they do sometimes. Yeah, yeah. Marketing for him. Cool. Well, I think that's a good place for us to wrap it up. So thank you for everybody for listening. Don't forget to follow or subscribe Don't to be notified of new episodes. We post new episodes every Tuesday at 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time on podcast services and YouTube. You can also find us on Instagram, Threads, and YouTube at Pixelated Realms. Thank you very much, everyone. All right. See you guys.